Hi all and welcome to my channel, Kaz here. Today we are going to be making mini pumpkins on our 22 pin circular knitting machine. And with these we are going to be turning them into a beautiful little garland that you can hang at your home come Halloween. We'll be making some pumpkins with just a normal plain stitch and we'll be using some other pumpkins in a version of my trailing ivy pattern which I have adapted for the smaller 22 pin machine. So stay tuned for lots of pumpkin fun. For this project I'm going to be using this lovely orange colour. Uh, it's called Himalaya Velvet Yarn. It's 100% micro polyester and it is rather thick so we have to take our time with this one. I'm using this yarn as well, Kartopu I think it's called. It's 16% uh, wool and 82% acrylic yarn. The lovely variegated shades of orange and green. I'm using a cinnamon gingery colour yarn, which I know is Aldi's yarn, but I've lost the label, and it's an Aran weight yarn. And when making the pumpkins using the orange Himalaya velvet yarn, I'm going to be using this Aldi yellow yarn in an Aran again as the liner to make it a little bit more economical. So let's get on with our project. I'm going to start off by showing you how to make the trailing ivy pumpkin on your 22 pin machine. And as normal, we're going to cast on over and under. And I'm using a cinnamon shade here. So over and under, over and under, all the way around the bed of your machine till you get back to the beginning. There we go. Once you cast on, zero your clock and we're going to knit two plain rows to start our pumpkin. So there's our two rows done. We're going to change over now to my slightly adapted trailing ivy pattern. And if you know trailing ivy from doing beanies, um, it's a wrap to knit to usually. But on this one we're going to condense it down somewhat. So we're going to do wrap to, knit one. Wrap to, knit one. Wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, and we know we're back to the beginning and we're going to have to use these two as knit twos, okay, but that's absolutely fine. And row two of the two row pattern repeat, one row of play, back to needle one. And we repeat that then over and over and over for 16 rows. So we wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one. When you're wrapping, make sure that you're wrapping so that the yarn is underneath the hooks there. It has to be underneath or you're going to get dropped stitches. And make sure it's not pulling your needles. You do not want that, okay? You want it to be fitting, snug, but not tight. Wrap two, knit one, underneath that hook. Bend down and have a look at your hook so you know what it looks like and you know then that that yarn has to be under that hook and then you'll avoid drop, dropped stitches or hopefully you will. Wrap two, knit one. Wrap two, knit one. Wrap two. Knit two, okay, on the end. Knit two on the end. Yarn in the yarn feeder. One row of pin and repeat those two rows over and over for 16 rows. So you'll have 18 rows then on your machine by the time you get to that point, okay? So I'll carry on now and I'll see you when I get to 16 rows of pattern and 18 on my counter. Okay, so wrap two, knit one, 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 Wrap to knit two. One more thing.
is the last row which takes me up to row 18 on my counter and now I'm going to finish with plain stitching now to row 40 okay so just carry on knitting as normal to row 40 last row now row 40 and we're done so we're going to snip our yarn and then we'll cast off and there's our work off our machine and there you can see the condensed version of trailing ivy there looking rather splendid so we'll assemble them a little bit later i'm going to run you through how to make it just a plain one um, for anybody that's new to circular knitting the yarn i'm using is a himalaya velvet yarn but for the 40 rows i'm going to be splitting it to be more economical with this one i'm going to be doing 20 rows in this orange like a blankety velvety yarn it's really pretty and i'm going to be following on then with just a normal aran in a yellowish color because that's going to be the lining on the inside so off we go. So to make it in this uh, velvety type yarn, we cast on as normal, over and over and all the way around. I do take it a little bit slower with this yarn because it is a little bit thicker, but it does go through okay. Just take your time with this particular kind of yarn. Yarn into the yarn feeder. I'm going to zero my clock and I'm going to do 20 rows in this lovely velvet colour. Like I said, I am taking my time because it is a little bit on the tight side sometimes. So there you go. Once it beds in, the first couple of rows are a little bit tender. So take your time. Other than that, just use a plain ordinary Aran yarn. It's perfectly fine. You can do your whole garland out of trailing ivy or plain ones. Absolutely perfectly fine don't have to do trailing ivy and you don't have to use velvet yarn you can just use plain iron in whatever color you like so I'll just crank around now doing 20 and then we're going to change to our liner color which for me is just a yellow iron based yarn I think it's an Aldi yarn oh, we're on row 10 11 now already so it's, they're pretty quick to make these little things ideal for your Christmas fairs, your autumn fairs, and obviously Halloween. As you can see, it does take a little bit more effort to push it through, but like I said, don't go whizzing around like you would normally with a yarn that you're happy with or used to, that your machine likes. Just take your time and ease it through. Because it is quite chunky compared to a normal iron yarn. Yeah, row 18, nearly there. Like I said, these are really quick to whip up. 19. And row 20. So I'm going to slip my yarn, change over to my liner. Trying to be economical with the yarn that's a um, little bit more pricey than a normal one. You get more pumpkins for less outlay then. So we're going to finish now up to row 40 using our liner colour. Just going to tie my joints together there. Now take your time with these. Sometimes you need to pop them down until you get into the, the first rows. It's like doing the patterns like trailing ivy. Sometimes you've got to ease your stitches down. And I just put my hand on the side there of my machine, my thumb rather, and I use my second finger to push the stitches down as they come up. And that makes it a little bit quicker to do so. There you go. Once you get into about row three, after the colour change, you're fine and dandy. There we go. So off we go now to row 40 and I'll see you when it comes to casting off stitch. We're coming up to row 40. Excellent. Chop our yarn off and we shall cast off as we normally do. 
I like to cast off one stitch at a time, starting off anyway. First two, and then you can gather a bit of momentum by picking up one or two, uh, two from there on in, and maybe three, four, or five if you're feeling brave. And sometimes you'll get a catch stitch like that, it won't come off, that's fine, just lift it up and pop your yarn through it and it's all done. And there we go, there's our work off and we stretch it, that's the favourite bit isn't it, stretching it. There you go, that's a lovely yarn, it knits up really nice if you go slow and careful. All right, so we'll move on to the assembly stage now, all right, and then we can attach our all our mini pumpkins in a row onto a garland which you can hang in your home come Halloween. Now we've knitted all our tubes, let's move on to the assembly process. And we have our 40 row tube here, made with an adapted trailing ivy pattern. And we just put one end inside the other. Grab the tail. Thank you, Charlie. And pull that. And when you're making your tubes, and I did forget to say, if you can leave a long tail on one end, that's going to be very useful for making the ridges in our pumpkin. Luckily enough, I've got a longish tail on the one side here, which is probably about um, 20 to 24 inches long. So cinch it together and a couple of knots to secure. And I'm going to leave the long tail on and I'm going to get my darning needle and I'm going to hide the tail of the shorter end inside because I don't need that one. In there like that and chop it off but don't get rid of it because it'll come in handy in a minute. So I'm going to leave that on the darning needle because we're going to use that to make our drawstring around the other end. Now you can put the drawstring in first if you like or you can fill it first. Now I prefer to fill first but by all means do the drawstring if you like. Now I got my stuffing here, probably a good scrunched up tennis ball size. Stuff it to the however you like to push it to the outsides there to make sure it stuffs all around the edges there. And that's probably about right. Now, oh the sun's coming out, how lovely. So here's my tail that I cut off and I'm going to pick up two stitches, miss two, pick up two, miss two, pick up two, roughly. I'm not going to worry if I go a little bit wrong on that. All the way around. Oh, I did go a little bit wrong there. Until you get back to where you started from, and then we can pull our pumpkin closed. One last little one there. And there we go. We can pull our pumpkin tightly closed now. And in order to make it a little easier to close, I had a little tip from Erin of Erin uh, Makes Designs. And you can find her on Etsy, she's got some fabulous patterns on Etsy. Pip the Puffin and Squawk the Seagull are absolutely gorgeous. So go check out Erin Makes Designs. There we go, so if you go around again, Hopefully it should stay a little better. See, it doesn't uncinch itself. So thank you, Erin, for that little tip. It does help a lot. So you can cinch and it doesn't come apart on you. So you can free up your little fingies. So we tie that tightly now. 
and hide our tails inside the work and we can move on to making the ridges on our pumpkin. So I've hidden my tails at the bottom of my pumpkin inside the work and this is my long tail now that I've left on so remember to leave a long tail on and now I'm going to switch to a darning needle with a pointy end on it so I'm going to put my yarn on that needle there and I'm going to aim as I did with this one here to divide my pumpkin into five sections all right so that's what we're going to do now so following one of the lines down back down to the bottom pick one any one will do to start off in through the bottom and up through the top right into the center there and pull it tight until it makes a little cinch like that okay it looks a little bit like a heart right now and then move across following another line pick whichever line you want I'm going to choose that one in through the bottom back through the top again and pull that one tight and you get another little peachy section and just carry on doing that I'm going to do it roughly five times but you do it by eye, you can do less or more, whatever you think suits you best or your style of pumpkin. So that's three. So this lump now I'm going to divide into two. I'll follow that line down there. Underneath. Through the top in the centre there. Pull that in. And then we're left with the last little lumpkin. And we're going to follow that line down in the centre there, through the bottom, back to the top again. And having a pointy darn needle, needle is an absolute necessity, I think. And there we go, that's nicely divided roughly into five. You can see that, that looks really nice. So I'm going to follow one of my lines back down to the bottom, and I'm going to tie it off down there with a little knot. like that again it all tangly wangly there you go great stuff so that's my little pumpkin squidge it all up into a nice shape and I call that a lovely little pumpkin so I'm gonna hide my tail inside my work now pull that through and snip it off. So now we're going to move on to making the little curly whirly bit in the centre. Now to make the little curly bit in the centre there, and each one of them seems to come out a slightly different, I'm going to be using this DK yarn because it's a lovely bright green colour. And I'm going to measure approximately 8 to 9 inches there like that and I'm gonna do that double it up then about five times so that's two three four and five and then I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail on the end that's not attached so I probably got uh, about a 12 inch tail and what I'm gonna do now is just twirl it I'm going to twirl and twirl and twirl and twirl and watch it doesn't spring out your hands because it will and twirl and twirl and twirl until it's really really quite tight and then when it's quite tight like that you can double it up and bring the ends together and it kind of knots itself like that into a knot there you go isn't that cute you can attach them like that if you want to if you just want a, a loose one but as we're going to be doing this shape we need to bend it over again so bend it over again like that and then we have our lovely little loop so what we need to do is with this long tail that we've got left now put that on a darning needle and we're going to wrap it around the end a few times with a few knots to secure it and then we can pull it through our pumpkin and through to the bottom and tie it off so I'm gathering it by there I'm just going to put a few little knots around it like that and just put a few stitches in the bottom 
to secure it like that. Or you could use a little bit of um, hot glue if you prefer. Okay, so that's what I'm doing there. And that secures it just nicely to put it into our pumpkin. And there we go. There's our little loop ready to go onto our pumpkin. Now with the remaining tail, I'm going to put it in like that and bring it through and pull that excess up like that. So I've got two tails. That's the aim. It's just fallen off. Bear with me a sec. Thread that back on quickly and secure that now with a knot. Like that. That's great, right? So we can trim that little bit of a tail off now. And then we have two tails, like that. And that'll help us attach it to our pumpkin. So I'm going back now to my needle with a point on the end. And I'm going to thread one end through. Like that. Oop, an off kilter there. Bang into the middle. I'm going to pull that string through. Great stuff. And I left a 12 inch tail on it, but you could leave a, a longer one. This 12 inch is just enough. There we go. We're going to pull that one through now. And there's our little hook and what we're going to do is just going to tie it off on the bottom and if you wanted to add a little bit of glue for safety reasons then you could do that put a few little knots in the bottom and then hide the tails some little stray threads there and strands and there's our little loop ready to attach to our garland of course you can use shop-bought stalks as well, you can use bits and pieces from the garden, sticks and such like, but you may have to either tie your uh, garland string on then or even glue it or use some little clips or something. But that's just an option that isn't going to cost you any money to make other than just twirling some pieces of yarn together. Now what we do next now is to do this with all our pumpkins and we'll end up with a lot of lovely little pumpkins that we can attach onto our string ready to make our garland. So now that all our pumpkins are complete and plump and ready to go, and I've made nine, you may very well make less or more for your project. I'm going to attach them together using some jute twine, which I've got here. Um, it's a nice rustic kind of feel, which goes with pumpkins, I feel. And all I'm going to do is to thread them on. So this is what I'm going to do with mine. I'm going to thread them on like that. So they dangly wangly. They should hold in place because the jute twine has got a rough feel to them. So I'm holding that at an angle and it is holding without having to sew it on or clip it. If you're using a different kind of hook or um, attachment there, you can obviously just tie it on like that. Okay, maybe a good idea to mark your twine with a, a piece of pen or a little bit of pencil or something so you get everything equally spaced out. So that's an option. Tie them on, um, sew them on, clip them on. I've even got some of these little tiny little pegs here which are ever so cute. So if you were really, really stuck you could even pin them on with those little pegs there. They're ever so cute as well. So I'm going to do that now. Just thread them on and then I'll show you where I'm hanging them in my house. Before I start threading my pumpkins onto this uh, jute twine, I'm going to put a slip knot on the end. I'm going to leave a bit of a tail on there. I'm going to wrap it around my finger like that. And then I'm going to push that up there like that and grab that. And that is my slip knot. Okay, simple as that. And then I'm going to thread on from the other side, put another slip knot on the end. And these slip knots are handy because you can put a hook or um, one of those removable hooks on the side of your cupboard or your fireplace or something like that and tighten it up and everything's fine and dandy. 
Okay, so that's a slip knot which will be going on one side, thread on the pumpkins and then another slip knot and attach to your hanging place. One, two, three, four, five, behave. Now then, let's take our pumpkins and arrange them where we're going to display them. Yay! Pumpkin fight. And here we are. Our garland is complete and isn't it cute? And as you can see on the left hand side is my trailing ivy pumpkin stack. And you can find a video for that in my playlist as well. But I absolutely love this project. It is simple to do and looks absolutely fabulous. So if you like this project, please comment, subscribe if you haven't already and share the video so other people can pop in and have a look at how to make this garland for the Halloween season. Best wishes to you all and thanks again for being part of my team on uh, YouTube. It's very, very much appreciated as always. If you make any of my patterns to sell the objects that you make, then a donation to your local animal shelter would be very much appreciated. Thanks again, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now. Ooh.